Alrighty, welcome back everyone. So we're just continuing on with the component calculation phase of this project. So the next set of components that we're going to be working on, <coughs> excuse me, are the timing circuit um, components, right? So it's just comprised of R sub RT and C sub CT, or in some cases I think they put um, C sub T on there as well. So we'll go in the data sheet and we'll talk about what those are. So just so quickly to point out what which ones we're talking about on the data sheet. So we are looking at, <coughs> excuse me, um, CCT and then there's RRT right here. So these two that go into pin four right here. And so what they actually do is it sets the switching frequency and maximum duty cycle of the circuit. So RRT and, and CCT are used to set the values. So what we're doing basically is we're creating a, like, I don't know if you must be familiar with like the little timing, uh, trying to figure out the time constant of a capacitor, you know, as it charges and discharges and they just put a resistor in series with it. So hopefully that, that's familiar because that's, li that's literally what we're doing. Is we're just we're, we're um, charging and discharging capacitor and that's what allows us to create our switching frequency and set our value so the data sheet says you use stick figures 7-1 and 7-15 to determine the values and choose a capacitor that has a flat temperature coefficient is another thing it, it says and we'll talk about both of those in a, in a second so if you haven't figured it out by now we don't actually there's no equations for these uh, necessarily right what they're doing is we're gonna look at some graphs and use that use some some plots on the graphs to help us pick our values and you can see I'm spoiling the answer already but I want to show you how we got there so because I think that matters right so we know that we want the control to operate at 110 kilohertz so that's our specified value and we're gonna see what values we need to select that so just we'll go in the data sheet and let's check out figure 7 dash 1 first so here I have figure 7-1 pulled up. So what we're looking at is we have these different colored lines right here. And you see they're, they're kind of drawn across this little Bode plot or you can even, you know, it's just a, a, a graph with it that's in log scale, right? So um, basically what we do <clears throat> is we select a capacitor value and then we, we solve for whatever resistor value we need so we have see how we have oscillator switching frequency on the y-axis and then timing resistance on the x-axis so we're kind of doing this backwards so we have already specified a y-axis value of 110 kilohertz and then we can just go ahead and arbitrarily pick a value of one nanofarad um, i did this because i think they did this in the data sheet so it just helps us verify our values a little bit better so one, I don't know if you know this, but one nanofarad is equal to a thousand picofarad. So that's why, that's how we got that value. So following, we're going to pay attention to this gray line. So now we need to find where this gray line intersects the equation Y equals 110 K. So I think what's in log scale says so 100,000. So this is 200,000. So we're just going to be hovering right above 100,000. So where that winds us up is somewhere in what I determined to be the 15.4 kilo, uh, kilo ohm range so looking at 10 15.4 kilo ohms it looks right about correct right so we're looking at time resistance so the 15k would be somewhere in the middle right because this, this is 10k and this is 20k and you have 30 40 50 60 all the way to 100 so we're looking right in the middle of this line and we're looking just above this other line so i'm saying we're looking right about here right so that's that looks like it put us kind of right on the money so i mean pretty self-explanatory we know our values are now a thousand picofarads and 15.4 kilo ohms so again i'll briefly talk about selecting you don't have to worry about power dissipation too much because this is a signal line so we're not expecting a high voltage we're looking at something like five volts maybe 3.3 .3 volts who knows nothing too crazy like the primary side of our uh, 
flyback transformer. So don't have to worry about power dissipation too much there. Um, but I will say this is a, these components are going really close to our actual controller. Uh, if you look, look ahead in the proposed layout that the data sheet gives you, these two components are pretty close to the pin. So that's something you'll see a lot is, um, is so I'll say what I'll say is start out with it again an 0603 package, but be prepared to go down something like 0402 if you if you determine that you need that uh, to get those components extra close to that controller, or you just need more space uh, for your layout in order to you know get this because you want these components as close as possible to your your controller uh, in order to avoid like stuff like parasitic inductance on our traces or you know, resistance on the traces and stuff. Um, Cause this is a pretty critical circuit here. It's only two components, but this is really important to the operation of our flyback controller. And that's also why they even mentioned choose a capacitor that has a flat temperature coefficient coefficient. So kind of what you'll notice if you look in data sheets of capacitors that their values like their capacitance or maybe their parasitic component values will change as a function of temperature. So that's why this is talking about this is that you need something with a flat temperature coefficient, meaning like its capacitance doesn't change at all with varying temperature because this power supply is liable to heat up or just say it's in the in, in an environment that gets hot, like it's out in the sun somewhere, right? You don't want your flyback controller to not be able to work on a sunny day. Like that just, that sounds ridiculous, right? I mean, that can definitely happen because this if, if this timing circuit doesn't work, like your whole, like you could really throw a wrench in the behavior of a flyback converter. So be extra careful um, and, and pay, pay extra close attention to everything about this, these components, like your pick some robust component values, like I said, with flat temperature coefficients, stuff like that, and be able to place these nice and close to the flyback controller with high priority. Um, real quick, I, would, I just want to take a look at 7-15 I don't recall it having anything important for us um, we'll just scroll down and take a look at it to see um, maximum duty cycle versus oscillator frequency okay this makes sense um, so this again was a one nano far farad um, capacitor so here we're looking at our we had a maximum duty cycle I think we specified ours to be like 75 percent or something like that um and so this is a oscillator frequency so this should be your like um, related to our timing circuit or even our, our flyback controller frequency so uh, we're looking at something in the order of something should be it should be pretty low right so something around here um i didn't find this to be that critical because we already like our hands were pretty much tied with those component select value selections i mean you could have selected something like this up here 220 pico so here's actually i'll quickly touch on this so let's say you needed a duty cycle that was different this is this is where you would this would help you pick your values for your initial timing capacitor right so let's say for whatever reason you just needed a, a duty cycle that was like i don't know something something insane like i don't know like you needed something that was like 75 percent at 2000 kilohertz this was two megahertz uh, at that switching frequency um like you would have to pick something like this right for whatever we say and we can talk about reasons why you do that but just yeah so that what i'm saying is this this would be help you with the initial selection of your timing capacitor actually so you could have started here um now I just went with the data sheet suggested some values and I just checked them out um, and saw that yeah that works for our application again because we don't have really stringent constraints this is just a, like a demo project this is a practice project so we can make up whatever rules we want to but in, in real life you would use other constraints to help you select these values here so yeah um, I would say that pretty much wraps up this section of the um, this little timing circuit, this section of the, the video of the series I'm working on. Um, if this helped you out, please drop a like. If you have any questions, drop a comment down below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. Have any projects you want me to work on? Drop a comment again. I will add it to a list. I got a whole long list of projects. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to, to releasing those. They just take a lot of work. They take a long time for me to pump them out. 
like you see here this is, this is gonna be like a 20 plus video series right here right now I have to do all the notes and stuff for it so it just takes me a while but I'll definitely get to them all get to all your suggestions don't worry about that um, yeah so but also if you want to stay up to date with all my content so again I'll be releasing all the videos in the series just kind of if you made it this far you should, hopefully you should catch on to the trend that this is you know I'm just releasing all of these down the row um, so just if you want to stay up to date with that then uh, just subscribe um, also I post some I'll sprinkle in some other content like all team tutorials um, and some EE fundamentals stuff so if you want to check out those videos I think they're also very helpful um, and then yeah subscribing will definitely help you out there so thank you so much if you made it this far into the video um, and I'll hopefully see you on the next